Hi everyone, my name is Marianne Inaber and thank you for joining in on the talk tonight. I want to first thank Google Developers Group Johannesburg for arranging the meetup, give a shout out to the other speakers and also thank the amazing sponsors. So my talk tonight is about using Kotlin for web development and specifically how it can be used as an alternative language compared to coding pure vanilla JavaScript and even TypeScript. So let me first give you a bit of background on who I am and how I started with my web development journey. So I'm the founder and also a developer for Rinko, which is a software company based here in Pretoria and we specialize in front-end development. In my early career, I worked on Android as a junior developer and have been delving into the web development space for the last few years. I've also started with my master's degree in multimedia at the University of Pretoria. So you can connect with me on Slack ZA Tech Community, on LinkedIn or on Twitter using at 048 Marion. So my journey started as a software developer at university where I was taught how to program C++ and Java, which is usually the languages most colleges and universities choose since it's great for teaching the fundamentals of programming and great to use for students to explain core concepts. So this is mainly due to C++ and Java being object oriented programming languages. For example, it's easier to implement and explain design patterns, different data structures and algorithms, and the concepts of inheritance and abstraction. Now, it's not that other languages can't be used to explain these concepts, but languages like Java, C++ and c -sharp already have the uh, most functionality built into the compilers and they've also been around for a long time. So you'll find that most textbooks use C++ and Java to explain these programming fundamentals and to illustrate coding examples to the students. Now, what is this and how is it relevant to Kotlin and web development? Now, personally, coming from this kind of strict formal computer science background of object orientation, front-end development seems like this crazy Alice in Wonderland universe. So where the laws of physics only apply if you want them to apply. Now, there are web standards, of course, which is developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, but they are only enforced on a browser level where the compiler and renderer is located. So how you get there is up to you. Now, what are these browser standards, or basically the end destination? So in the most basic form, you should use HTML for markup, CSS for styling, and ECMAScript or JavaScript for the scripting. So personally, when I started with JavaScript, it was really fun. Since there were no strict rules and no seg faults compared to C++, but I quickly found I longed for the structure of those early university languages. It's almost like rebelling as a teenager against your teachers and parents, only to find out that they made some sense. So this talk is not to convince browsers to change their standards to compile Kotlin or even replace JavaScript, since JavaScript's loosely typed structure works perfectly for usability on the web. You don't want a web page to crash or show a compilation error on the screen. But this talk is rather to help you understand as a developer what programming options are available to, uh, to you to still adhere to these browser standards and why I am personally choosing Kotlin. Now to simplify this, we can group all these programming options into three different categories. So the first category is going native. The second one is going typed and the third one, which I would like to call going home. Now, let me explain these three categories. So firstly, native, um, just to point out, um, it should not be confused with Kotlin native. I'm referring to native from a browser's point of view. So in web development, that would be coding pure HTML, CSS, and, and ECMAScript. It's what the browser compiler needs to interpret a, a web page or an application. So since we're focusing on the scripting side, in our case, that native option would be JavaScript, or even adding a library like jQuery would still be native in this case. The second category is typed. So what this means is the language you choose still gets compiled to JavaScript, but there's an extra layer at the top um, enforcing strict typing. 
So with strict, strict typing enabled, this means you can't pull your magician skills and multiply your name by 10,000. Um, and this also allows the back end and front end to stay in sync with any typed logic that's necessary. So typed JavaScript languages have evolved um, the past few years and more functionality has been added more than just the typing. It's like adding interfaces, mapped types, mixins, etc. Um, which is sufficient and effective for most web developers. Examples of these category languages would be TypeScript and Flow. So the going home category, which I would like to call that, is the home in the sense of where your heart is. So using the tools that you are familiar with. This category exists due to languages either being chosen by the current environment, like the company or platform ecosystem is already in a particular technology realm, or the developers are, are already accustomed to a particular programming language and would now like to code web pages. So you can think about of instead, instead of googling how to code a web page, um, you'd rather search can I create a web page with language X. So if there is a big enough demand from the user base, usually the language creators will build compilers or interpreters to allow this. So examples of this category are Blazor using C Sharp, T, VM using Java, and then of course Kotlin with Kotlin JS. So what is also relevant to this particular category is the idea of mastering a programming language. So if you're in the realm of front-end development and someone mentions Kotlin, you probably think about it as, oh, that new Android language perhaps even yet another language that you'll have to learn on top of all the other buzz languages that are now in demand, like Go and Dart, Scala, Python, etc. So it can become really overwhelming. And as a front-end developer, you might not see Kotlin at the top of your list. Or you only learn a language based on the company as part of um, the project that you're working on, which is not, the, not a wrong approach, but perhaps not the most effective um, as a developer in the long run, you never really get a chance to master a particular language. Now, mastering a language is one of the most important things you can do as a programmer. Now, it might sound strange in the tech world, where the more experience you have across multiple platforms and frameworks, the more valuable you are. And who can blame us feeling this way? I mean, job advertisements expect a list of almost all stacks available, and it's almost impossible to master all of them. So personally, I think it's better to approach um, it with rather mastering a particular language before you move on to um, the rest of the tech stack. So then you get a chance to understand and implement all the fundamentals of programming, explore all the features of the language and even its limitations. So you can eventually code in any language if required and also choose the best tool for the job. So I personally picked Kotlin as my mastering language and I was really thrilled to find out that I can use it beyond just for Android development. So why did I choose Kotlin.js for web and not pure JavaScript or a type language? So firstly, Kotlin.js allows me to easily implement the programming fundamentals, like I mentioned, which I was taught traditionally, and also kind of explore it in an object-oriented way like c -sharp and Java, where instead of having the loosely typed JavaScript, it allows me to have a lot more structure and then apply all the, the old traditional concepts of programming. So it also has a very similar syntax to TypeScript. So I personally have a lot of experience with Angular. So transitioning from TypeScript to Kotlin was very easy with its um, similar syntax. It's like JetBrains really wants you to just get on with the logic and worry less about the syntax. So that was really great. So other advantages of choosing Kotlin as your mastering language is that it opens up the possibility to create Android apps, which is a huge bonus since most single page web applications are required to be available on native mobile frameworks too. So instead of having layers of multiple languages before accessing Android, you're already mastering Kotlin um, for the web, so it's easy transition to make between web and Android. And obviously that means that um, you can share some of the, 
the code base or the logic between the web um, web application and the Android app because both are already in Kotlin. So for example, it's not like having an old traditional React app where it's JavaScript, perhaps some React Native, and then going to Kotlin and accessing some of the Android native features. Um, you're already directly coding in Kotlin. So on the website and on the Android side, um, it's, it's already React Kotlin and Android Kotlin. So it's just a win-win on my side. So this also means that if you are an Android developer and you are already mastering Kotlin, you can immediately start creating web pages too. So um, it opens up a lot of career opportunities, I think, as well from a mobile developer's point of view. So there's obviously the, on the other side, the backend side, if you are already a Kotlin developer, um, perhaps, perhaps with JVM, then you can now start creating web pages. And so traditionally, if you were a bit scared of JavaScript because it's too loosely typed and unstructured, as a backend developer, that's also a very promising idea that you can use your um, mastering language with Kotlin that you're already familiar with and bring all that concept over to the web. So these are just some of the, um, the benefits I mentioned, and all of this is obviously um, available through the Kotlin multi-platform. So in summary, you can master Kotlin by using it for web development and code for any other platform too, if you wanted to. So that's an immense benefit as a developer, and this would not be possible with pure JavaScript or a typed language. So let me show you some of the code examples. I'm just going to give a brief introduction on how you can get started with using Kotlin.js and React as a front-end framework. Now, to get started with a React app with Kotlin, I would first like to mention there is an excellent tutorial on Kotlin's hands-on website called Building Web Applications with React and Kotlin.js. So it's a great step-by-step -step tutorial with clear documentation and examples. If you have never coded with React or Kotlin before, it's an excellent place to start and you'll be set up and running in a few minutes. So on that note, I would definitely suggest that you use IntelliJ IDEA. There's also a free community edition that you can download to get started with. So it contains um, the built-in Kotlin JS library that is needed for the tutorial. So when you create a new project in IntelliJ, you'll pick Gradle as the build automation type. You will select your Java JDK version, make sure Kotlin DSL build script is checked, and simply select Kotlin JS for the browser as the additional library. So once you create the project, Gradle will initialize a blank project for you that supports Kotlin then as the um, sorry, JavaScript then as the Kotlin compilation target. So obviously that means that it can then run on the browser natively. So if you're already set up with a Kotlin project and you'll need to then, or want to start then create, creating React apps, you'll need to include the Kotlin React DOM wrappers inside your build Gradle dependency. So that's inside your build Gradle.kts file. So this will allow Kotlin to access existing um, React DOM and no other dependencies are required. So it's quite lean to actually just get started. Now, all that's left is to include the Kotlin React script inside your HTML. This will automatically be created if you've added um, and set up the new project inside of IntelliJ with the Kotlin.js plugin. The script will be the same name as the chosen project name, and the Gradle plugin will actually automatically build all the code and dependencies into the single JavaScript artifact. So making this project very clean and lean in comparison with um, multiple dependency scripts that sometimes have to be added to your HTML file. So it's just this one script. So to show a bit of difference between a normal React app syntax and a Kotlin J syntax, you'll notice the plus sign in front of the hello stream. So this is required to build type safe HTML. So when you created the project, that is what that check was for with the DSL. So Kotlin supports domain-specific languages. What that means is you can write HTML with the benefits of a statically typed language. So the plus sign is a lambda parameter for 
the H1 element in this example. Um, in simple terms, this means it appends the string inside the element through operator overloading. So what are the benefits of writing HTML inside Kotlin? So it kind of loops back to what I was starting with with the all traditional programming languages. Is um, Because Kotlin supports domain-specific languages, you can manage the flow and state of the website by using programming te techniques that you are already familiar with. So like using loops and conditional statements, string interpolation, etc. So the state of the HTML will be managed around this. So lastly, I'm going to show you a comparison between a normal React app component and a Kotlin JS React component. So in this example, it's a component for a alert, um, alert specifically that's going to show on screen. So it takes in a message attribute. So with the normal React app, um, it will use JSX um, and then the div would be provided with a message and a relevant class. And then in comparison with the Kotlin JS, you'll use something called rbuilder provided by the Kotlin React dependency to convert the DSL, like mentioned in previous slides, to the HTML. So you'll notice the strict typing um, of the string in the functions argument and also the difference in conditional um, the conditional empty check for the message. So this is just a very basic code example of how to get started and showcase some of the syntax differences. Like I said, I'll definitely recommend you check out the tutorial provided by Kotlin's hand on. Right, and then lastly, what does this mean for future web development like Kotlin JS? So Kotlin JS allows you to gain access to the browser's APIs. So the native API is available through the browser in a type safe fashion and you leverage Kotlin's full potential through this um, object orientation, obviously, the, the type of language that it is. So for example, you can use Kotlin to code applications using WebGL. If you've worked with WebGL and JavaScript before, you'll understand how frustrating that can be with just pure JavaScript. So Kotlin brings a lot of light and opportunities in the space because it's um, an object-orientated approach and also strict typing. So if you've never heard about web audio API before, I'd suggest you, you take like five minutes Google search after, after this talk. And um, I personally think there is so much more to explore with this API, the audio API, and being able to use Kotlin to delve into it is really exciting. And then lastly, there has been so much advances in the backend and data analytics side um, that it seems like the front-end web, web world side has been kind of um, stuck, in a, stuck in a state for a few years. So with all these things going on in the background um, and the backend, with all the, the great technology coming out, it seems like it always just ends up in tables on the front-end. So I think kind of distributing the power between um, leveraging on the front end, also this, this great, amazing language um, with all its power, I think it's going to open up a lot more doors. And I think it's happening with Kotlin JS. Thank you for joining the talk. And um, hopefully you learned something and choosing Kotlin as your mastering language.